Happy Friday, you guys. I didn't get to um, post. I did not get to post. Every year, I post on Facebook and um, Twitter, X, whatever it is now. And, you know, sometimes other platforms. I will post, today is our darkest day. And then I'll put, like, a bunch of arrows so that you have to go to the see more section. And I'll say, happy winter solstice, right? Because that was yesterday. Yesterday was the shortest day of the year for the northern hemisphere of our planet. Um, <clears throat> and at least now, we're going to get more sunlight every day moving forward, right? This is the the good news. Um, I don't know if this really happened or not because it kind of sounds like she's taking tidbits of other people's stories of going to the ER and just relaying them. So for instance, I've done a lot of live streaming or at least videos or at least commentary about my recent experience having to go to the ER and talking about how I I felt faint while I was doing my workout routine which by the way when I went for the follow-up appointment um, and I <clears throat> told the doctor what I was doing when it happened it didn't seem like something <clears throat> that would cause a reaction um, but what she said, because I was just basically like holding onto a bar and raising up on the balls of my feet. And I had to do this 20 times. The last three times were very difficult for me. And then I started feeling like I was going to pass out. It's almost as if she's describing a portion of my experience, but not the whole experience. Um... But the doctor that I talked to um, in the follow-up said that even um, a basic task like that, raising up on the balls of your feet, can cause the blood to drain from your brain, right? And can make you faint. So in that moment, I was getting faint. I was placed in a chair. They took my blood pressure. It was 80 over 40. Um, and I was sent in an ambulance to the ER. Like I was, I was in some serious shit. Um, and when they did, when they started doing all the testing on me, uh, they did the EKGs. They did the, um, the, they did three of them on me within the first like 10 hours that I was there. And they did a CT scan, and um, they took a lot. They took a lot of blood. Um, discovered that I had um, a fatal level of low potassium in my blood, um, and kept me overnight. Right, like it was a big deal. She's literally using the ER as. A replacement for making an appointment or just going to an urgent clinic um, if she was truly on death's door if she was giving you the real readings of what was happening here they would have kept her overnight they would have kept her in the hospital this doesn't um, add up you know it doesn't add up um. Basically, I'm learning that diabetes is really no joke. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Hi, guys. How are you doing today? My name is Kenny J. The J stands for jerk because my kidneys are a pair of jerks. And we're going to look at the Chantel video. I've chopped and edited some of it. Um, but just let's hear what she has to say about going to the ER. Um, those of you who follow me know I have not not having a good time so um just a special shout out to you guys thank you so much um for all your support and love that being said if you haven't subscribed yet 
please subscribe, hit the like button. I appreciate that. Leave a comment down below. And if you want to support my channel further, I do have membership. So check that out if you want to do that. Let's get into this. Today, I'm going to be telling you about my story time. So also, uh, my other ER experience that happened uh, within the last couple of years while I've been, you know, battling with my leg injury uh, was when the political director of the PAC I was working for, I, I asked him to get me an, an Uber driver to go to um, an urgent care because I was feeling faint and early on in the injury, it was very difficult for me to drive. Um, I have fortunately less pain than I did initially, like, you know, after immediately after the injury, I had so much pain that there would be times that I was in bed for like three days in a row. And there were times I could not drive. And there were times when I needed immediate medical care, but not urgent care, not like emergency care. So he told me to call, um, 911. I got carted off and they didn't keep me long at all. They did, you know, inspect me right away because I had been feeling faint. My political director had told me to call 911. So they did inspect me right away. But um, also, the nurse who was taking my blood and all these things seemed to be really irritated the whole time. And I'm like, look, I'm just doing what they're, what. I was told to do. It's not like I asked to come to the ER, right? But they're not going to keep you there unless you're about to die. You know, you've got to be there um, with a serious emergency or they're going to send you home because you're wasting everybody's time for being there, right? So I got discharged very quickly. And then I was stranded at the hospital because, um, I, my political director would, would not get me an Uber. So I had to pay for an Uber myself, um, and figure out how to get home because the, the best thing that the hospital would do for me was give me a bus ticket. And the closest bus stop to my house is like a mile away and you have to walk uphill and they're expecting me to do this uh, on a damaged leg where I can barely walk. I can't even walk like one block today. Today I can't even walk one block without being completely spent. Of me being in the hospital yesterday. So I was in the ER for, sorry for the sun dust, for like 12 hours. So, wow. So 12 hours with treatment without paying a dime. Uh, not the 20 hours she was going on and on about. Again, I said that was not the norm. Here's what happened. Right. So yesterday I had a eye doctor appointment. So I went to the eye doctor appointment and then, you know, as I was pulling into the driveway, I felt dizzy and I noticed I was a lot more dizzy and like my vision was more blurry than usual. <sighs> so why were you driving after an eye examination when they give you the drops for the dilators? No, she's saying uh, you misheard her. She's saying she was already experiencing that before she got to her eye appointment. She's saying that that's how she felt on the way in. Oh, she's going to kill someone on the road. She is. Mm, probably true. Then during the exam, they had to put these contrast eye drops in to see behind my eyes. And it was, it made my vision even more blurry. So I had to wait in my car to even drive. Um, and I noticed that the, the you know, the, the, 
the dizziness wasn't going away. The blur, blurry vision went away enough that I could drive. So I thought I'm going to go to the hospital and I'm going to get checked out because, you know, you hear horror stories about diabetes, um, ketoacidosis, hyperglycemia, going into diabetic coma. So I decided to go to the emergency because um, the walk-in clinics were pretty full for the day and uh, I don't have a family doctor. There's a wait list. And viewers have told you you could go to urgent care clinics, walk-in clinics, and they will treat your diabetes. Um, so it didn't have to come down to this. That's for sure what she's been back for two weeks. Um, time to go to the Chinese food buffet, eat big Turks, do all that fucking around. But hey, mm -hmm. no, 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 let's not go to an urgent clinic clinic and you know get some stuff sorted out okay so and on well and on top of it even the smaller clinics are also going to prioritize um health risk right so if she's feeling faint um she might get bumped in front of the line but um she obviously just has a problem with like being in a weight room right terrio so I went to the ER, and they have all my file there already, so that's good. Um, so I thought it was going to be kind of in and out kind of thing. You know, they would prescribe insulin or something. That's what I thought, and I would get to go. Oh, okay. Miss Pretty Privilege here thought she could, you know, bypass the system, go to the ER, get her insulin prescribed for her, and be on her merry way. Nope. Doesn't work like that. You still have to wait in line. Still have to wait um, to get a family doctor, but in the interim, you can get a doctor out of a clinic. I'm going to keep saying that. Um, yeah, didn't work out for you, did it, Chance? So, no, I... Yeah, they assessed her as less of a priority because she wasn't on death's door. She wasn't going to pass out and die in the weight room. That's how it goes, Chantel. Like... Unless you have an actual emergency, they're not going to do that. You know, told about my, I told them my symptoms. She pricked my finger, took my blood sugar. It was 23. I'll try to put the conversion here somewhere in MGDL, but that's MMOL. And it's, um, that's very high. So they were surprised how high it was. So um, then ECG, I think it's ECG tech came and said, we're going to do an ECG. So they take me to this little room, like ECG. I guess they're just trying to rule everything out. Um, they hooked me up, did the ECG. Then I had to wait in the waiting room. And I was waiting for a long time. I was expecting mm. to go to the yellow dots. Well, to my surprise, I was asked to go to observation. So I was getting a little worried. You know, they're waiting for my ECG results. I have to go to observation. Okay, so electrocardiogram shouldn't take that long for results. It actually probably takes more time for them to put all the stickers on you and get the reading. Mm -hmm. um, but pretty common. I get it anytime I have to go to the ER. <sighs> But they did blood work while I was waiting in the, the ER waiting room, actually. They did they did blood work and hooked up an IV, you know, just in case they need to draw blood and give fluids. I was like, I have to put on a gown that didn't fit, so I had the gown half on in case they need to. And that, she hooked me up. My oxygen sat was 97, which is fine. My blood pressure was 135 over, I don't even know. And they didn't seem concerned with that. And uh, so um, they did take some blood uh, from the... They just put the tube into the IV thing and take the blood that way, very convenient. Instead of sticking you all the time, you know? So I found this very interesting because, honestly, I haven't had a blood draw from an IV since I was a patient at Sick Children's Hospital because they don't want to constantly be poking children. Um, I know there's different protocols. They put a device like that in my arm as well when I was in the ER. And... Um, <clears throat> You know, this kind of pissed me off, to be real with you. So they said that they had the second tube to do the blood draws. And then when I got transferred to a regular bed, they still kept sticking me. And um, said, oh, no, we can't use that because that was given to you in the ER. And that's a different team of people. All right, thanks for that. So I got... 
stuck. I can't even, I can't even remember how many times I had so many, um, IVs and, um, blood draws and a shot. I had a shot, um, of something that would prevent blood clotting. Um, I had, uh, sticks all in down both arms. But yeah, I, I had a device like that in, uh, when I was in the ER recently and it was, they were supposed to draw my blood out of it and they totally didn't even use it. Most different hospitals do things different way, but, um, yeah, she's pretty lucky if she got that because I will have two, three, four IVs and still get, still get a poke at the end of the day. Um, if you've seen in my last videos, you can see my arms are black and bru blue, like bruised up and down because of it. So, um, mm -hmm. My blood sugar started at 23 when I went in there, so I presented with, the doctor came in, it was a resident doctor, she said, uh, you have hyperglycemia, and she said, if you didn't come when you did, um, I suspect that you would have, it would have developed into like ketoacidosis because of the symptoms you had. Now, my blood test came back that my blood wasn't acidic, she said, but she thought that it could develop potentially into that, and so I said, oh, well, that's nice, <laughs> you know, that's not scary at all. Oh, why is she saying it like that? Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's not scary at all. You did this to yourself. You were literally eating plates of carbs and fat and sugar the last few days. Um, basically, I'm learning that diabetes is really no joke. For AdSense. For right now, anyways. But yeah, I've been saying this in all my videos. It is no joke. Um, it takes your eyes, it takes your limbs, it takes your kidneys. If you've been watching my videos for the last, you know, week or so, you know how many secondary diseases you can get just from kidney disease alone. And you would not be immune to that just because you got, you know, your kidney failure because of diabetes. Um, nothing, nothing is changing here. This, I, I'm convinced, by the way, just so you know where I stand, this is for content. Nothing's changed. Nothing will change until something actually does, and this isn't it. She um, said we're going to keep, we're going to give you... Well, I think that this is also kind of something that she's doing right now because her story arc of trying to have Salah um, come after React channels yesterday or the day before, whenever it happened. I think it was the day I actually, like, rolled my ankle, right? Um which was a couple days ago. Um, I think this is her way of trying to redirect the focus of her audience so that they're not thinking about how hardcore that was a fail. It was a pretty bad fail, especially with um, what, um, what's his face? I covered his video. It was only like four minutes long or something. Girl, uh, girl, something. I, I, I'm spacing. I'm sorry. It's, it's still pretty early. It's like six in the morning. Insulin and try to get your blood sugar down. We want it down below 15. So I said, all right. Um, she said, are you been, have you been taking your, your, you know, um, metformin? I'm on something that's a different name than metformin. I said, no, because uh, it makes me very ill, and I haven't been taking it regularly, so that's a no-no also. Oh. So let's just read between the lines there. If she takes it, it doesn't make her stomach feel good, and she cannot um, mainline her drug of choice, which is carbs, fat, sugar, all that stuff. Um, now, I know a lot of people who are on metformin, and they say once your past sort of the initial hump you get used to that feeling and it does pass um obviously Chantal has not given the drug enough try to see if see if that would be the case mm -hmm. so um she gave me my first dose of insulin and then uh took a blood test about 20 minutes later my blood sugar went down to 16.5 and then um, they did some blood work. I forget the name of the test. I'll have to put it here somewhere. Osmo something. 
um, that, you know, because when you're diabetic, you urinate more, more frequent. But if you're not drinking, if you're dehydrated and not having enough fluid or something, it leaves like a um, sediment in your blood. I don't know. Bernie Vald mm -hmm. is like gasoline on a fire for fat Bernie. So, I so I've said this before, that when you have uncontrolled sugar, um, your kidneys have to work overtime to get rid of that excess glucose. And you're going to drink more and you're going to urinate more. You can actually still be dehydrated no matter how much you drink. So I was I was highly dehydrated from these blood tests. So they gave me some fluid and I, oh man, that was... It wasn't on a pump. It was like a drip. So it was so slow. And I had to keep my arm a certain way or it would drip even slower. Anyway. But you were only there for 12 hours? Why do I feel like she's trying to like repeat my story of how I was in the ER overnight with a potassium drip? And I literally said that, that I, I couldn't move my arm certain ways because the needle was going to put, I, I can't, you guys, I can't. I hate when they flush your line. You can taste the saline in your body. Ugh. Oh, well. Can confirm when they, they flush my IV or they flush my CBC line. I can definitely taste the saline. Um, there's some other drugs as well that I just taste horrible um iv iron being one of them that just leaves a bad bad taste in my mouth um but i don't know this is the least of her problems right now really dude they put iodine in me so that they could um do the ct scan and see if i had any brain tumors that was a lot of fun and then finally, by the end of everything, by the time I got home, I left with an insulin, uh, with a blood sugar reading of 11. It's a lot better than 23, but still high. Um, I was starving. Like, I felt really dizzy and nauseous, though, So, but I was still hungry. Like, <laughs> um, I was starting to feel a bit better, but I was so tired and hungry. It was like 12 hours since I've eaten. So the lady said, we want to give you something to eat to see how you tolerate it. So she brings this little the sandwich that was like the hospital food is horrendous i'm sorry and you know what doesn't make sense to me i mean i know it's not a five-star hotel but like they gave me a turkey sandwich on brown but it was like stale brown bread with like one slice of turkey and butter on it <laughs> wow dude i can't i can't it's like she's repeating what i said about my hospital visit um, and by the way, no, they're not going to put fucking butter on your sandwich. Are you for real? You're a diabetic. I got a turkey sandwich when I was in the ER because I hadn't been admitted into a room yet. So I missed their dinner service, right? And um, I tried to eat it overnight. Like, it took me a long time to actually get through it. But it was just a regular, like, deli sandwich. It was a turkey sandwich. And there certainly wasn't butter on it. Oh, my God. I mean, they they did give me a very small, like, um, mayonnaise packet, I think, to squeeze on it. Um, but I'm not a big fan of mayonnaise, so I didn't, um, I didn't use it. It was like gross, but I ate some of it because that was the best sandwich when you're starving. Okay, they gave me water, so I ate that in the water. But then I they gave me apple juice, like full sugar apple juice, and a full sugar, not diet low fat, gluten free. It was a whole sugar loaded muffin, um, apple cinnamon muffin, and I'm thinking. I'm I'm in the hospital on ob in observation for hyperglycemia and you're giving me sugar because if I would have eaten that and drank the apple juice with it they would be giving me more insulin I'm sure. All right. So the nurse specifically told you we're going to give you some food to see how you react. A lot of people from what I I've heard when they're given IV um uh, insulin 
your body does not react the same. So they wanted to probably give you full sugar foods to see how your body adapted. And you just said no. <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, big Turks, Chinese food, everything else. Sure, 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 sure. Mm. Um, will confirm <laughs> those sandwiches are the worst. Uh, when I was waiting in the yard, ER, I think I had a cheese sandwich dry dry as your mother's dry but um they just told me to stay they, they didn't prescribe me insulin they told me to just stay on my um metformin type of drug that i have from kuwait and to follow up with uh a family doctor which i don't have so <laughs> that won't be happening okay so what have we learned Chantal went to the ER to try to fast track her way into some pre prescription um, insulin. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, they didn't send her away with any resources, any clinics to go to, nothing like that. Very interesting. Um, anyways, thank you if you made it this far. Um, I know I'm a little quiet. Yeah, thank you for your uh, video, Kidney J. You're doing a good job. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, comparing this to my own ER experience, it seems like she's just watching other people's channels and getting, you know, some info. Um, first of all, this woman puts her entire life online. So if she was in the ER yesterday, um, she would have been taking pictures, she would have been posting about it, you know, she would have maybe even live streamed in the middle of it. Um, but she's describing things that some of us have described about our experiences in the ER. So I don't know that this actually happened. Plus, um, if they're putting you on an IV drip, uh, you're not going to be there for just 12 hours. It's It takes longer than that. So uh, this is a, another unbelievable story from Chantel. Um, and I feel that, in my opinion, my humble opinion, this seems like another distraction campaign because the shit she and her husband tried to do the other day didn't work.